Uh, thank you. Um, two things before I start. One is, yes, I'm a psychiatrist, so you'll have to decide if I am a bit crazy. Um, and second, if I seem a bit rushed in my presentation, I am, uh, just because I have a lot of slides to get through. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to uh, catch me later on today or tomorrow. So I'm going to talk about uh, prader willi syndrome and looking at the genetic subtypes and clinical neuropsychiatric diagnoses in a group of uh, residential care adults. And the several uh, individuals were involved in this study. So as we have heard uh, earlier, certainly individuals with prader willi syndrome have uh, multiple abnormal findings, physical, mental and behavioral, neurodevelopmental that uh, you've heard about earlier. Um, this is essentially a, a, a cartoon of chromosome 15 and the, uh, the area that is um, expanded is the Q11 through 13 region and the different genes um, in that region and uh, the three separate breakpoints um, as well. So as we know, prader willi syndrome is a disorder of uh, genomic imprinting. You lose the, the uh, gene expression from the paternal chromosome. If you lose the gene expression in the maternal chromosome, uh, you will actually will get uh, Angelman syndrome. So genetic subtypes, you've heard a bit about this uh, earlier today. Um, paternal deletion, approximately 70% of cases. And I'm going to talk about uh, type 1, which is a larger deletion. Type 2 is a smaller deletion. There are also atypical deletions. And then maternal uniparental disomy, or UPD, approximately 25% of uh, cases. Uh, for purposes of this talk, um, there are three uh, different types of UPD, uh, heterodisomy, which means um, you have two separate copies of the maternal chromosome 15, and then there's segmental isodisomy. Again, you have two separate uh, copies of the maternal chromosome 15, uh, but there are regions um, that are identical, uh, and this is a result of a meiosis 1 error. And then finally, isodisomy, you have two identical copies of the entire single maternal chromosome 15, and this is a result of a meiosis 2 error. And finally, the third category, imprinting defects, we see in 1 to 3 percent of cases, can result from micro deletion uh, or small deletion of the imprinting center uh, or an epimutation, epi or a mutation in the imprinting center. Uh, genetic testing, this is a bit of a, a very brief um, history lesson, uh, not routinely available until the uh, late 80s and early 90s. Prior to that, we had to rely on clinical criteria for, uh, for diagnosis of prader willi syndrome. In 81, high-resolution chromosome testing, they actually were able to identify the, the uh, deletion. And then in 83, they were able to identify the deletion was of uh, paternal origin. In 89, uh, polymorphic DNA markers able to identify uh, UPD. In the 90s, uh, fish and DNA methylation. And currently, in what we used for our study, two separate tests, uh, methylation-specific multiplex ligation probe amplification, or MSMLPA, which is much uh, easier and quicker to say, and high-resolution chromosome microarray. This is a bit of a busy slide, but essentially what this shows is um, type 1 deletion on top, type 2 deletion down here. Um, this is the, uh, the blown up Q11 through 13 re region on chromosome 15. Uh, in type 1, um, between breakpoint 1 and breakpoint 3, you lose um, all of these um, uh, genes. And so you have only one copy number. Uh, and then um, when you look at other regions in the chromosomes, both in 15 and other chromosomes, you have um, two copy numbers. So we know that just this portion is deleted. This is bottom is type 2 deletion, which is identical to a type 1 deletion, except there's a small region between breakpoint 1 and breakpoint 2. Um, that's conserved, and that has four different uh, uh, genes in there. Um, so that's the difference between a, a type 1 and a type 2. Um, so looking again at type 1 deletion versus type 2, using the microarray uh, results. So the uh, blue um, rows are type 1 deletion. 
So you see uh, one uh, essentially came from mother, one row comes from father, and then the child. But in the, uh, the black uh, circled region, there's just the two uh, rows, so you're missing the uh, portion of the paternal chromosome 15. Type 2, again, just identical to type 1, except the area in red is conserved between breakpoint 1 and breakpoint 2. So if you look at microarray results for the UPD, um, the three different uh, types I briefly mentioned earlier, segmental isodisomy, so you've got two, uh, so essentially three green uh, rows, uh, two from mom, uh, one is the child, and the, the area uh, that's missing are the, uh, where you lose the heterozygosity. Um, and then if you look at the isodisomy, um, this again just shows only two rows um, again, you have identical um, uh, chromosomes um, to the mother. And then finally, the uh, pink, uh, the heterodiceme, um, uh, two separate uh, uh, chromosomes um, from the mother. So enough of that. So changing gears, Proud of Willie Homes of Oconomowoc. So it's the largest USA-based um, group home system specializing in the management of Proud of Willie syndrome. Uh, they've been ex in existence for approximately 32 years. Uh, right now, there are 11 group homes in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is in the upper Midwest of the United States. Um, if anybody's a basketball fan, uh, we made it to the NCAA uh, men's uh, championship game, but unfortunately, we lost, um, but that's Wisconsin. Um, so in the group homes, there's 24-hour staffing. Um, there's a full-time APNP. Uh, half-time uh, psychiatrist, which is myself. There's complete food security. Uh, each resident has a meal plan and they work uh, individually with a dietitian. Uh, during the day, during the weekdays, um, they attend either uh, work um, or participate in day rise, which is a structured day program where we'll do things like art, occupational therapy, social skills, exercise, sensory integration. So right now they're well, I think there are 85, 86 residents. We had a couple of admissions. Um, age range are 18 to 60, and they come throughout the United States. Um, they've all been diagnosed with prader willi syndrome, but what really started this whole uh, story was that we only had uh, 10 diagnosed genetically, um, or that we had uh, genetic results available before. So 74 were diagnosed uh, clinically, so it was really wanting to understand genetically what was going on in our, in our guys and gals that, uh, that uh, started this whole process. So study purpose, three goals. We wanted to obtain samples and determine the uh, genetic subtype. We wanted to evaluate the clinical neuropsychiatric diagnoses. And finally, evaluate the relationship between the genetic subtype and the neuropsychiatric uh, diagnoses. So participants were recruited and consented. Um, detailed neuropsychiatric evaluations were completed. Diagnoses were actually made using the DSM-5 uh, criteria and also informed by the use of the Diagnostic Manual for Intellectual Disability. Neuropsychiatric diagnoses were um, characterized for uh, each subject, and that was based on a personal interview, meetings with staff, uh, and uh, extensive review of records. And the amount of records, of course, varied uh, depending on the individual and how long they had been um, at the facility. Um, saliva was collected, uh, two milliliters, which is a very small amount. A bit tricky given the, the sticky saliva, but I was impressed, very impressed with our staff's ability to be successful in collecting enough uh, saliva in 72 out of 73 uh, individuals. And laboratory analyses were all done at the University of Kansas under the direction of uh, 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 Merlin Butler's lab. And there they diagnosed uh, prader willi syndrome and then diagnosed the subtype. So DNA was isolated, and then the uh, MSMLPA was conducted. That uh, told us whether or not um, they had prader willi syndrome based on DNA methylation. We identified type 1 versus type 2 deletions, and if they had neither of those deletions, then they went on and did the microarray, and that was able to identify the UPD subtypes, which I discussed earlier, uh, identify if there was a micro deletion or an atypical deletion, um, also, to look as, as to whether or not there was any uh, consanguinity. 
and also they screen for uh, deletion or duplication of 23 known obesity genes. So what did we find? So 73 uh, participants, 34 males, 39 uh, females. Um, you can see the age at study, the age of admission, BMI, number of psychiatric diagnoses. Uh, there was a significant negative correlation between age and number of psychiatric diagnoses. Significant positive correlation between age and BMI. A significant positive correlation between age and age at PWHO admission. Significant positive correlation between BMI and age at PWHO admission. And finally, um, the number of psychiatric diagnoses was not uh, related to BMI or age uh, at admission. Looking more specifically at the neuropsychiatric uh, diagnoses, uh, we grouped them into six categories. Um, any psychotic uh, features, so that would be any psychotic disorder or if they had had bipolar disorder with psychotic uh, features. Bipolar disorder, non-psychotic. Anxiety disorders, major depressive disorder. Um, intermittent explosive disorder and excoriation disorder, uh, which is simply skin picking. Um, and there was no uh, statistically uh, significant difference between uh, males and females for any of those categories except intermittent explosive disorder where um, males were much more likely uh, to be diagnosed than females. Uh, trending towards significance, um, females more likely to have a depressive disorder, which of course that's what we see in the general population regardless of as to, as to whether or not they may have Prader-Willi syndrome. There were certainly other diagnoses, uh, attention deficit disorder, conduct disorder, uh, tic disorders, um, uh, which were not included at this time. So if you look at the, uh, the genetic uh, subtype, so looking at uh, deletion, UPD, imprinting, 50% um, uh, had a deletion, 37% uh, uh, had UPD, 4% uh, uh, had an imprinting uh, defect, 6% uh, were unclassified, and the goal or the plan is to collect um, DNA from both uh, uh, mom and dad and then to relook at that. And only two um, did in fact not have Prader-Willi syndrome in our, in our group. And we also looked at, of course, the, um, the age, the BMI, and the number of psychiatric diagnoses in, in the various uh, subtypes. Um, overall, there was no consanguinity, uh, and there were no deletions or duplications in the 23 known uh, genes for obesity. Um, if you look just at the deletion subtype, separating it uh, into type 1 versus type 2, and looking at um, the variables on the left, um, the only uh, statistically significant difference was number of psychiatric diagnoses. Uh, didn't quite reach uh, 0.05, um, but this was not um, uh, controlled for age. So when we did control for age, we did find that uh, deletion type 1 uh, uh, had uh, significantly more um, psychiatric uh, diagnoses than a type 2, which has uh, been shown in the literature as well. If you look at specifically at the, uh, the different diagnoses in type 1 versus type 2, there was no significant uh, difference between type 1 or type 2 in any of the six uh, categories. Um, interestingly enough, though, type 1 percentage-wise was higher in all the categories versus type 2. Um, not finding any statistical significance, not too surprising uh, given our um, low statistical power. Uh, then we looked at UPD, uh, three different subtypes um, and the various um, uh, factors, and there was no correlation between age or the number of psychiatric diagnoses. Um, age had no impact. Um, and then if you look at the, uh, the various diagnoses in the UPD, uh, there's no statistically significant difference between any of the three different categories. And again, likely a result of low statistical power. And then if you look at deletion versus UPD, no statistically significant difference, but again, likely a result of low statistical power. Um, also likely reflects the similarities um, in the severity of illness among residential care, meaning people are more likely to get referred for residential care if they have more significant uh, psychiatric uh, difficulties. So in summary, 
Uh, 73 adults, um, average age 37 years old, BMI of 28, psychiatric diagnoses um, 4.2. Most common diagnoses were anxiety spectrum, skin picking, and intermittent explosive. 50% uh, uh, had uh, deletion, 37% UPD, 4% imprinting, and sig significantly more psychiatric diagnoses were found among type 1 versus type 2, no consanguinity. Um, the observed distribution of the genetic subtypes likely reflect an increased probability of residential care for people with prader willi syndrome with UPD. Um, also, uh, prader willi syndrome adults with deletion subtype and residential care likely have a more uh, significant or severe psychiatric illness than those found in the residential care, I'm sorry, in the home care setting. Finally, a thank you to all the staff at prader willi Homes in Oconomowoc. I had a birthday a couple weeks ago, um, and for my birthday, they gave me a spittoon, um, which I thought was brilliant, brilliant on their part. Um, so, um, thank you. <laughs>